I'm going to give you uh, a few statements from the Sunnah. And I'm going to show you how, they, how they've been misrepresented in our modern discourse. One hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says, this, this is a guide to having a great relationship as a husband and wife. Alright? Number one, the Prophet ﷺ says, إِذَا طَعِمْتْ فَأَطْعِمْهَا it's usually translated, when you eat, feed her. It's like you put some hay in the corner and you say, Honey, go feed. Feed. Go. This is how it's translated, feed her. Like you just put a tro... Okay, feed now. What it means is, when you eat, eat with her. And therefore you find the whole seerah and life of the Prophet ﷺ, that every time you hear of the Prophet having a meal, one of his spouses was there. He was always sharing the meat with Aisha or Umm Salama. There was always someone there from his house, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You not ever once, not even once in a seerah, hear the Prophet ﷺ having a plate to himself. Aisha, she describes, Anas described, that the Prophet used to love pumpkin. And Aisha says, the hadith is in Bukhari, she says, I know that the Prophet used to love pumpkin, so when we were eating, and the plate had pumpkin, I'd kind of push the pumpkin towards his side, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas would do the same. He said the Prophet liked pumpkin soup and the chunks in it. So when I would see, I would see his eyes looking for the chunks, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? al qurah he loved it. That was his, and he said, Pumpkin puts barakah in your food. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith is with Abu Dawood. But it shows you the habit that they would eat together. The second section of that hadith, when you get yourself kiswa, you've gotten yourself something to wear, faksuha, get her something. Now I know some of the brothers, they got this big grin, brother Yahya, come on man. My wife shops 50 times to every one of my times. You're telling me now I gotta shop when I shop? That one measly time, then a miskeen. One time, I go shopping, I gotta get her something? Yes, why? Why? Why do you gotta get her something? Because abraku sadaqa. The charity that has the greatest baraka, infaqur rajuli ala ahli, is that a man buys his wife something. See, the sisters are quiet, brothers. They're taking notes. They're like, give me my phone, I want to record this. <laughs> Brother, are you recording? Make sure you give me a copy. Email that quick. Right? It's true. That sadaqah, there's nothing greater that will put love in the heart. This is the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You buy yourself something, don't be that guy who comes home, you got yourself, I know you, you know, you got yourself two shirts and a pants, and you walk in, oh, what did you get? She's not asking, what did you get yourself? <laughs> it's, that's, not, that's, not, not, that's not the question, right? There's more to it than that. What did you get? <laughs> Including me, right? <laughs> The kiswa. Ajlis hafi majlisik. Have your wife sit where you sit. Sometimes, you know when you're invited to uh, some brother's house and they go a little bit too far trying to be more conservative than the Prophet ﷺ, like too conservative? Where all of a sudden, you know, the brother meets you, Assalamu alaikum, come on through the front door, mashallah. Uh, sister, go around the back. Uh, be careful of the red backs, be careful. Yes. Duck, you got a duck, sister, you got a duck. <laughs> right? All of a sudden, sister, just come around the back. Don't worry, when you go under, you come up, you'll find, it, you'll find the kitchen. You'll be in the kitchen. Don't worry. So you ask this polite question. He says, Assalamu alaikum, uh, Where are the sisters going to sit? Oh, brother, they'll be comfortable. I put the garden chairs in the kitchen. <laughs> You're sitting on this lounge, masha'Allah, you're on the couch, you're comfortable. That's not the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Even in his final death, وسلم, the last moments of his life, when Fatima came in, his daughter, وسلم, he got up and let her sit where he was sitting. This is our way. 
the wisad, the, the, the cushion he was sitting on, he put it for his daughter. He puts it for his wife, he puts it for his companions. And that's why when you hear that Abu Sufyan came to the house of the Prophet, his daughter, and he's about to sit on a cushion, she took it away, because he wasn't a Muslim yet. She said, I will never let you sit on the cushion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's an honored place. So you tell her, okay, go around, she, she's in the kitchen. All of a sudden, one of the children comes in the room. The brother gets a bit upset, right? Sisters, he calls his wife, you have to keep the children away. This is a me- we're solving the Palestinian problem in here, don't you see? <laughs> this is important discussions. We have an agenda to meet. You can't have little kids walking into this room. No, 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 you keep them on your side. This is, how it is. This is not the sunnah of Muhammad This is not what you see in his life. Speak words of love to your wife. Now, <laughs> brothers are getting frozen stares coming out of me. Brother Yahya, take it easy. Speak loving, tender words to your spouse. Now that's, that's the way of Rasulullah When he would... Amr ibn al-As, he was a new Muslim. Now Amr, he was the one who went to Ethiopia. He tried to bring them back, the Sahaba, Ja'far and the Sahaba who had made Hijrah in subjugation. But Allah gave them victory over him. He was an enemy of Islam. But when he came to Islam, the Prophet took his leadership skills to good use. Moments after his Islam, just a few days and weeks, the Prophet sent him as an ambassador to a region, to be the rep- representative of Rasulullah. Hamra thought to himself, it must mean that he loves me. Why else would he choose me and not Umar and not Abu Bakr and anhum ajma'in? Why else? So he comes into the masjid and he says, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Who do you love? Come on, it's gotta be me, right? You chose me, all these other guys, you chose me, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet looks at him and says, My wife Aisha, what's wrong with you? What kind of question is that? <laughs> Aisha. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Amr, under, he goes, no, 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 of course. I know, of course, it's Aisha. Everyone knows. There's no shyness of the Prophet saying, I love my wife, Aisha. You know, some of the brothers ask him, yeah, who do you like? Well, my mother. <laughs> He's shy to say, you know, his wife, right? Well, I love my kids, brother. My, kid. uh, my wife, Aisha. So he says, no, 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 from the man, Ya Rasulullah, he says, Abuha, her father, she's still on his mind. He doesn't say, Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. He says, Abuha, who's there? Aisha still there. The Prophet would sit in his house, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith is with Abu Dawood. And he would sow. See, when, when we talk about some of these things, I want you to understand that if you were to witness the Sahaba, and the way they conducted, you would think that they were mad. You would, you would, you would be surprised at how they dealt with things. You, you wouldn't be able to understand them because the way they viewed the world was metaphysical. They understood that how they lived impacts the natural life. If I pray to Allah, it rains. If I don't, Allah will stop it. If I pray to Allah, illness is prevented, barakah is kept. If I don't, it's lifted. They understood this. So the Prophet was a handyman in his home. He was fixing things around the house. One day he saw a rip in his sandal, so he is stitching it. But because he's not good at it, وسلم, and it was an excessively hot day, he's sitting in his room with Aisha, and he's concentrating, and because of concentrating in the heat, he is sweating profusely. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aisha sitting across the room with a big grin. She's smiling at him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet looks up and he sees her laughing, like smiling. He says, Mimma tadhaqeen. You laughing at me? What are you laughing at? And she says, Ya Rasulullah, 
When I saw this moment of you and these beads of sweat, تَذَكَّرْتَ أَبْيَاتَ أَبَا هُذَيْلِ I remembered the poetry of Abu Hudayl, who was a poet, where he said that the sweat of the one you love is more precious than pearls. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet got up, left what he was doing, went over and kissed her. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَقَالَ لَهَا يَا عَائِشَةً أَنْتِ أَكْثَرُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ You to me are more than those words. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's love, man. The Sahaba, they would see this. Uh, Ali, who's married to the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ. Don't think this is just Rasulullah. Ali, he's married to the Prophet ﷺ's daughter. He comes home one day, and his wife, Fatima radiallahu anha wa ardaha, tastak. She's using siwak. She's brushing her teeth. It's not the most romantic kind of thing. You know, he's brushing her teeth. He comes in unannounced earlier than usual. She doesn't know he's there. And as soon as he sees her, he is inflamed with passion that poetry emerges. He's poetic. And all of a sudden he says, Ya'ud al araka kayfa araka. O twig of the Eric tree, how can I see you doing this? Embracing my wife so intimately. Like he's jealous of a stick. لَوْ كُنْتَ رَجُلًا لَقَتَلْتُكَ If you were a man, I would have killed you. <laughs> now there's no woman who will hear her husband talk about her toothbrush like that, except she's gonna love him. That's romance 101. That's like romance beyond romance. Don't tell me Shakespeare. Romeo and Juliet could die and come back and die and come back. And they got nothing. This is Ali and Fatima radiallahu anha. This is the Sahaba. So when we talk about the sunnah, it's not attire, it's demeanor. It's not words, it's actions, it's statements of love and eloquence. This is the house of the Prophet ﷺ.